All right, guys, this is the 12th time I've shot this video. Uh, and I want to make sure we do it right. Uh, this is a controversial subject uh, in the way we're going to present it. However, from a health benefit standpoint, I don't think there's anything better that you need to learn about than this, all right? Now, before you take any type of supplement, it's best that you talk to your physician prior to. Now, one thing I would tell you, all right? Physicians are just like anyone. They're not schooled in everything. So they may not even know what you're talking about when you start talking to them about this particular substance. If you run into that, all right? Or, or maybe you're like, hey, uh, the doctor's not uh, being very open-minded to what I wanna do. I'm gonna tell you, you can go to a website, right? The American College for Advancement in Medicine, ACAM.org. You can go there and you can do a search and you can find doctors in your area that specialize in this, right? And, and it's not a bad idea, you know, call their office, maybe pay for a consultation so you can learn more about this especially if you have any type of disease state, uh, it's always important to talk to a physician uh, that's knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about it before you do any of this, all right? So with that said, let's talk about what we're gonna do today, all right? We're talking about detox number three. Now, if you remember, all right, when we first started talking about detox, we are talking about basically uh, how detox could lower your blood pressure, right? And if you remember, we talked about when we talking about blood pressure, we were talking about basically the fact that cholesterol does not block your arteries, right? Cholesterol does not cause hardening of the arteries. That's a myth, right? Calcified plaque is what causes hardening of the artery. Now think about it. What does calcium do? It hardens your bone, right? So if it gets in your blood vessels, it's gonna harden your blood vessels, make them less elastic, and they can't open and close like they're supposed to. So what you want is you want something that's gonna remove that calcified plaque. All right, now today what we're gonna talk about is a synthetic amino acid. Now, when I say synthetic, that means it's man-made. That means it's not natural, right? And, and I don't like talking about things that are not natural, but from what I've studied and learned, this is something I think is important to get information out so people can look at it for themselves, all right? So with that said, right, it is a synthetic amino acid. It has a chemical makeup similar to that of vinegar. Now, it is called calcium disodium EDTA, and we're talking about the oral type, all right? Oral calcium disodium EDTA, and it's important that you learn the name because there's different types of EDTA, and we wanna make sure you get calcium disodium EDTA. Now, what does this do, all right? Well, actually, it's been approved by the FDA for more than 50 years for lead toxicity. If you have lead toxicity, basically they are going to give you IV calcium disodium EDTA to basically uh, remove the lead from your body, right? It will, it'll bind up with the lead, remove it. Now, the thing is, it is a non-specific what they call chelator. Now, chelator just means it's a, an, an agent that binds with another agent and removes it, right? And it's a non-specific, which means it will bind with lead, it will bind with mercury, all right? You don't want those things in your body. However, it will also bind with things like magnesium and calcium, which are things you need, all right? I'm not going to go into protocols and, and tell you the ins and outs. That's why you need to do your own research. Uh, however, uh, when we get back to calcified plaque, this stuff does remove calcium and in, in some research, it has showed to remove calcified plaque. And if you, remo if you remove calcified plaque, guess what that does to your blood pressure? It decreases it.
Now, not only has it been approved by the FDA for lead toxicity, it's also been approved by the FDA as a food preservative. In fact, believe it or not, you have probably taken in calcium disodium EDTA at some point in your life, whether it be through a soft drink, whether it be through uh, foods you eat, because you will see this on packages of food as a preservative many, many times. Okay, now, when you start doing your research, you're gonna see conspiracy theory written all over this. However, I don't wanna get into that, right? Bottom line is, I wanna give you information so that you can do the research yourself and figure out if this, this is something that uh, may be beneficial to your health, right? Now, what I do want you to do is I want you to do some specific searches, right? And one of those specific searches is for a Dr. Gary Gordon. Gary, like you spell Barry, G-A-R-R-Y-G-O-R-D-O-N, Gary Gordon. This man has contributed 57 years of his life to the study of EDTA and what it can do for uh, persons with lead poisoning, what it can do for persons with mercury poisoning, what, can it, what it can do for persons overall health, right? And he's a wealth of information. Uh, I would encourage you to study him. Now, don't just look at his side of it. You can do other searches and find other sides. And, and like I said, you have to weigh what one person says versus the other, and you're gonna have to make a determination whether this is something that might be beneficial for your health. Now, the one thing I, I like about uh, EDTA in, in particular is it is a short-term thing. You, you don't take it for the rest of your life like blood pressure medication, right? Uh, you take it, you get the benefits from it, and then you don't take it anymore, right? Uh, you know, you go back to your vitamin K2, Vitamin K2, if you're getting enough vitamin K2, what do we learn? Calcium, instead of going to your blood vessels and smooth muscle, it basically goes to your bones and teeth where it's supposed to go. So if you're, if you're staying up with your vitamin K2 and your magnesium, there's no need for this long-term. However, if you already have a disease state going on, hypertension, you, this may be very beneficial to you. All right. Last thing, like I said when I started, you know, this is information for you. And you need to uh, do your own research. You need to learn for yourself and figure out if this is something that might be beneficial for you. If you think it might be, what's the next step? You need to go talk to your physician. And what we say, if your physician's not knowledgeable about it, find one that is. American College for Advancement in Medicine, acam.org, do a search, find you a physician, and get their information on it. Uh, these are men and women who have been schooled in this type of therapy. Hope this helps. Uh, Hope it's beneficial to you. Uh, if you have questions that I can answer, like I said, be happy to answer them in the comment section.